Hello and welcome back to our um, demo videos dealing with the study guide. So we already finished exercise 5-1 and 5-4. Now let's look at exercise 5-5. This, um, uh, this question deals with changes in variable cost, fixed cost, selling price, and volume. So before I go any further, <clears throat> I want to go ahead and type in the information that the problem gives me. They give us our per unit and they also give us the percent of sales of the uh, selling price which is $90 uh, that is 100% of sales has to be. They give us the variable cost uh, which is $63 and they say that that's 70%. How do we get that? Well, very simple. We take our variable cost and divide it by our sales. And we get 0.7 or 70%. Um, this problem does give us the contribution margin, but let's remember how to calculate that contribution margin. Sales less variable costs. Okay, and they also give us the CM ratio. Now, just without looking, I know the CM ratio is 30%. How did you know that? Well, I know one way to calculate the CM ratio is one minus my variable cost ratio. Or <clears throat> I can just go ahead and take the contribution margin and divide it by my sales. I get 0.3, which ends up being 30%. So the first, there's actually two parts here. And question number one says, how much will net operating income increase or decrease per month if the monthly advertising budget increases by $5,000 a month, or $5, or sorry, $5,000, and monthly sales increase by $9,000? So what we have here is our... Um, what we have here um, is a change in the fixed expenses as well as a change in the um, the selling right the selling um, volume okay or the yeah selling volume so how much are our fixed costs well they're not in the chart but if we read underneath it says hey well, it doesn't say hey, but fixed expenses are thirty thousand per month, and the company is selling two thousand units per month. Okay, so what we need to do, what we're going to do, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to calculate for number one, what's the current? What does it? What do we currently look like? Well, they tell us we're selling two thousand units, right? So what are my sales? VC is variable cost. I'm going to put in my CM, I'm going to put in my fixed costs, and I'm going to put in my um, NOI, right? And I'm assuming we're at a net operating income. If it's not, we would have a net operating loss, right? <clears throat> so there's two ways we can do this, right? We can do the current um, contribution formatted income statement, and then we can do a comparative contribution formatted income statement that shows sales with additional advertising budget and we can look at the difference between those two or we can take our uh, we could do our quick uh, quick shots right our, 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 our quick calculations that we have but for right now we're gonna walk through both because I want to make sure that we know how to put together the contribution formatted income statement correctly uh, using proper form, as well as getting getting used to the concept of price times a quantity or a cost times a quantity. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our selling price and we're going to multiply that by two thousand units. Gives me one hundred eighty thousand. 
right? All I did was take the 90 and times it by uh, 2,000 units. I'm going to do the same thing for variable cost. Variable, co variable cost per unit is $63 times uh, 2,000 units. I get 126,000. Now from here, I can calculate the CM two ways. I can just subtract sales from variable cost, or I could calculate it by saying, let me take the unit contribution margin times the quantity. Either way, doesn't matter, okay? Fixed expenses are $30,000. To get our net operating income, we take our uh, $54,000 contribution margin, subtract out our fixed costs, <clears throat> we end up with $24,000. Well, now we want to look at what are our, our um, sales with advertising budget, because okay, we're going to increase it. So we know that our sales are going to increase by $9,000, right? They don't tell us how many units or anything like that, what the increase is. We could figure it out if we wanted to, but we're just going to take it for what it is. 89, 89, or I'm sorry, 180,000 plus my 9,000. Now, can we figure out what our variable costs go up by? We can, right? We definitely can. How do we do that? Well, we can do a side calculation to figure out what the units are, right? Because originally we were selling 9,000 units, okay? I can do a side calculation and say, okay, let me, let's think about this, right? We know the selling price we know the increase in dollar amount. We can figure out what the units are. Can we not? So if I take my 2000, or I'm sorry, my $9,000 increase, and we divide it by the selling price per unit, we're selling an extra 100 units, okay? So that means in total, we're selling 9,100 units. So I can now figure out what my variable cost is. I could take my variable cost per unit times my new volume. That is not right. Oh, we were selling 2,000 units, I apologize. Now we're selling 2,100, okay? So we now have our new total variable cost. Again, to figure that out, all I did was take the increase in sales volume, which is $9,000, divided by the selling price. So to figure out the new contribution margin, I just subtract sales from variable cost. I get 56.7. I then have to subtract out my new fixed expenses, which are 35,000. I can then calculate what my new net income is. And my new net operating income is $21,700. So by increasing my fixed expenses, I actually decreased my sales, okay? And we can look at the difference, right? What's the difference here? Well, we take our um, increase in sales minus our old. I have an increase of $9,000. I could do the same thing with my variable costs. I get $6,300 difference. I could do the same thing with my contribution margin. I get $2,700, right? That's my new contribution margin. Well, what's my increase in fixed expenses? Well, that's $5,000. I apologize, my uh, mouse is so touchy. Okay, so to figure out what the decrease is in my 
new net operating income after increasing my fixed expenses, it's negative $2,300, okay? Longer way to do it, pretty, um, pretty simple, right? But we have an alternative we can use. We have two alternatives, right? The easiest alternative is we can use our contribution margin ratio and figure out what our change in net operating income is. So I know that my incremental contribution margin has to be $9,000 because that's my increase in sales times my 30% contribution margin ratio, which gives me $2,700. That's the incremental increase in my contribution margin. <clears throat> Next, I subtract out my incremental advertising cost. which I know is $5,000, right? I take the difference between these two, and I see that my net operating income is gonna decrease by $2,300, okay? So I want you to know how to do it both ways. We have to understand that definition of incremental cost or I'm sorry, of, of contribution margin ratio and how we can use it. We take the incremental increase in sales, multiply it by the CM ratio, that tells us our incremental change in our contribution margin, in our total contribution margin, okay? Now let's, let's look at number two. Number two says, refer to the original data, which means, this and this, okay? This over here is part of uh, number one's change. So they want us to refer to the original data, okay? And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste this right down here. So we know we have our original data, okay? And I'm also gonna copy in the Okay, so we have all our uh, original data right here. All right, okay, there we go. So what's the problem say? How will net operating income increase or decrease per month if the company uses higher quality components that increase variable expenses by $2 per unit and increases unit sales by 10%, okay? So for number two here, what we're gonna do is we could do one of two things. We can do our contribution formatted income statement, which is probably at, at this point the easiest thing to do, right? So let's go ahead and, and do that. So under this new this, the guise of this new um, plan, our sales are gonna go up by 10% in total, right? So I'm gonna take my sales and I'm gonna multiply that by 1.1. Okay, 
right? Now, the variable expenses, we have to calculate a little differently because they're going up by $2, right? Originally, we had um, variable cost per unit is $63. Well, the problem says it's going up by $2. So we could take the variable cost of $65, right? Times our increase, right? Well, what is our increase? Well, we're selling 2,000 units, are we not? Actually, let's pump the brakes before we go there. Let's figure out what our new sales volume is, right? Originally, we're selling 2,000 units, right? They increase by 10%. That's $200 or 200 units. So now we have the increased per unit variable cost times our increase in units, right? How many units are we producing now? Well, we're producing 2,200 units. That gives me a contra or yeah, that gives me a total variable cost of $143,000. I can then calculate what my contribution margin is under this new example, and it's $55,000 minus my original expenses, because expenses did not change here, right? They're going to be uh, $30,000. And my new net operating income is $25,000. So my net operating income is going up by uh, $1,000. Okay, so bear with me. So I apologize about that. Um, there's another way to, to solve this. Okay, there's an easier way to solve this. So we have a $2 increase in variable expenses, right? Yes, variable expenses are going up by $2, but guess what else is happening? If this is going up by $2, instead of being $63, it's now $65. What's our new contribution margin per unit? $25. So we could say that. Let me go back. Okay. So we could say that, yes, we have a increase in variable costs, that trans that also translate into a $2 decrease in the contribution margin. So another way I could do this is I could say, okay, let me just focus in on the contribution margin, right? Let me figure out what is my expected CM with new component. And that new component is, or I should have said higher quality component, I'm sorry. Higher quality component. Okay, so let's figure that out. Well, right now I'm selling 2,000 units. 2,000 units, okay? I need to multiply that by my 10% increase, right? So I could just say 1.1 times my $25, right? That ends up being $5,500. So this is my new CM. That's really what I calculated right here. What is my new CM? Now I can calculate the current CM. Well, that's easy. I could just plug in $5,400 because I know it's $5,400, right? How do I know that? Well, 2,000 times my original unit contribution margin of $27 gives me $54,000. I can then subtract these two which gives me $1,000, which incidentally 
is my change in net operating income, okay? So this is the change in total CM, okay? So the idea here is that, again, you know how to do it the long way, but you understand what we're doing, right? An increase in sales, sales volume is automatically going to increase in or is automatically going to translate into an increase in the contribution margin right what i did here was i showed my increase in sales by saying 2000 times the 1.1 and i multiplied it by the new cm right the new co unit contribution margin i was easily able to determine that because it was 27 well variable costs go up by 2 Contribution margin has to drop by two dollars. Okay, so not not too difficult there. Um, number one, ask for the break-even point. Or I'm sorry, we're jumping ahead. Uh, exercise four six, ask for the break-even point. Um, they give us the selling price is $15 per unit, the variable expense per unit is $12, and they give us the monthly fixed expenses, okay? So again, this is 5-6, and I can very, very easily figure this out, no problem whatsoever, right? So let me work with the information that they gave us, right? They said that the selling price was uh, $15 per unit, the contribution margin, or I'm sorry, variable cost was $12 per unit. I have enough information to calculate my unit contribution margin. It's going to be three bucks, right? Sales less variable cost gives me three dollars. That's my CM. They told me what my fixed costs were, right? They'd say that the fixed costs are $4,200, okay? I'm going to go a step further, right? Because remember, whenever we're using calculating break-even points, depending on if we're looking for dollars or units, dictates if we use the unit contribution margin or the contribution margin ratio. So I'm going to calculate those out. Well, right off the oh, sorry, right off the bat, there we go. Right off the bat, sales are always 100%. Our variable expense ratio, it's going to be high, isn't it? I take my variable cost divided by my selling price, 80%. So in that case, my CM divided by my sales gives me my contribution margin ratio. Now, number one is looking for the... Um, calculate the company's break-even point in unit sales, okay? So unit sales, right off the bat, I know I need to use my contribution margin, okay? So I'm going to take my fixed expenses, because remember, the calculation is fixed divided by the unit CM. Okay, pretty easy to calculate. So I'm going to say equals 4,300 divided by my three gives me 1,400 um, units. So I need to sell 1,400 units to break even. Okay. Number two says calculate the company's break even point in dollars. Well, if I'm looking for dollars to break, break even, I need to use my fixed expenses, and I need to divide that by my CM ratio, right? So how do I do that? Well, very easy, right? I'm going to say equals my fixed costs divided by my CM ratio of 20%, that gives me $21,000.
So I need to sell, I need to have sales volume of $21,000 in order to break even, okay? Now let's look at number three. If the company's fixed expenses increase by $600, what would become the new break even point in unit sales and in dollars? Well, guess what? The only thing that has really changed here is my fixed expenses. They're going up $600, right? They were originally $4,200, so now they're $4,800. So guess what? I use, I'm going to come over here and say three. This is number three. I use the same calculation, right, to figure out what the new units are. In order to do that, I say equals my new fixed expenses, which are 4,800, divided by my unit CM of three. I now have to sell 1,600 units to break even because my fixed expenses went up. Okay, how do I calculate that in dollars? Well, I'm gonna do the same exact thing, right? To figure out the dollars to break even, I need to use the CM ratio. So I'm going to divide my new fixed expenses of 4,800 divided by my new CM ratio of 20%. I get $24,000. And that, my friends, is exercise 5-6. Now, exercise 5-7 is identical to what we just did. Okay, so let's work through this one. Very super easy to do. Okay, 5 7 says that um, this corporate Lynn Corporation has a single product, give us the uh, selling price of 120 per unit, variable expense per unit is daily dollars, the company's fixed expense is $50,000. So before I do anything, guess what I'm doing. Here's my SP per unit. It's 120. What's my variable? Oh, what's my variable cost per unit? Well, it's 80 bucks. My fixed costs in total are $50,000. Okay, I'm going to figure out what my CM contribution margin is per unit and what my CM ratio is. So to figure out the contribution margin, you take your sales less your variable costs, give you $40. What's my CM ratio? Well, contribution margin of $40 divided by my sales gives me 33.33333. Okay. We'll round and say 0.34 or specifically 34%, okay? So number one says, calculate the unit sales needed to attain a target profit of $10,000. Okay, first thing I gotta remember, what is my calculation? Well, I'm looking for units, units to uh, break even, okay? That formula that I need to use is target profit plus, oh, plus fixed costs divided by my unit CM. Okay, so no problem, right? I can do this very, very easily. What's my target profit? Well, it's um, $10,000 plus my fixed costs. $50,000. I need to divide that by my unit CM. Well, my unit CM is $40. So to figure out what the units are, I just divide. 60,000 divided by 40,000 gives me 1,500 units. Okay. Number two says Calculate the dollar sales needed to attain a target profit of $15,000. So now I'm looking for dollar sales, right, to 
target profit. By the way, this one up here should not be break even. It should be dollar sales to target profit. Okay. I use the same exact equation, right? Well, almost. Target profit plus fixed costs divided by, what do I use since I'm looking for dollars? The CM ratio. Okay. So what is my numerator now? Well, I take my target profit of $15,000 plus my fixed cost. Gives me $65,000. I then divide that by my, right, yeah, divide that by my CM ratio. I'm going to get rid of the cents here because we don't need cents. Ends up being $191,176. And that, my friends, is how you figure out your target profit. Um, let's see, the next one we have yeah, the next one we have is exercise 5-8, five dash, five dash which is asking for a margin of safety, right? So let's see what they what they tell us here. Um, they give us data for, for their monthly budget and they give a selling price, variable cost per unit, fixed expense and the units, um, unit sales per month, okay? So the first thing I'm always gonna do whenever I get a problem, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put everything on my spreadsheet, my selling price, my variable cost. I'm gonna calculate what the CM ratio, or CM and CM ratio is. I need my fixed cost and I need my unit sales, right? So they tell us in the problem that the selling price per unit is $30. $20 is the variable cost. So I can figure out what my CM ratio is or what my contribution margin is right off the bat. It's $10. I want to put in my percentages, right? So sales divided by sales because sales is always 100%. My variable expense ratio is variable costs divided by sales, which ends up being 67%. And my contribution margin is sales, the, or um, contribution margin divided by sales gives me 33%. I know my fixed cost in this example were $7,500, and I know that I sell 1,000 units, okay? So the first thing we need to do when dealing with margin of safety, we know that we need to figure out what are the current sales, what are the sales at break-even. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what is our break-even point, right? Specifically, what's the break even in dollars, right? Because we're working with dollars here. So, very easy, I take my fixed expenses, I divide it by my CM ratio, I end up with $22,500. That's what it is to break even. Now I need to figure out what are my current sales in total, right? Well, that's easy, I can do that. I know I sell 1,000 units, I multiply that by the selling price per unit is $30, I get $30,000 in budgeted sales. So how do I figure out the margin of safety in dollars? I take my sales less the break-even sales, okay? Very easy for us to do. Sales less break-even. And I see that my, why did that not work?
There we go. $7,500. This is my margin of safety or MOS. I'm going to abbreviate margin of safety in dollars. Number two says, hey, what's the company's margin, margin of safety as a percent of sales? Well, in that case, very easy to do. I just need to remember what my calculation is, right? It is margin of safety in dollars divided by my sales. Okay, so what is my margin of safety? Well, it's $7,500 divided by my sales, which I know are 30,000. I get 25%. That's my margin, that's my margin of safety as a percentage. Now the next one we have to do looks at degree of operating leverage. And in order to figure, figure out the um, degree of operating leverage, we first need to figure out how do we calculate it and go from there. Okay. Now, in this problem, if we look in the book, they give us an entire contribution margin, or I'm sorry, they give us a an entire contribution formatted income statement with everything we need, right? So I'm just going to kind of plug and chug here, so to speak, right? What is the calculation for the degree of operating leverage? Well, that's easy. I need to take my contribution margin. Oh, I need to take my CM and I need to divide it by my net operating income. Well, that's easy. In this problem, the contribution margin is $48,000 divided by my net operating income of 10,000. I get a ROI, excuse me, I get a degree of operating leverage of 4.8. So number two says using the degree of operating leverage, which we already calculated in part one, estimate the impact on net operating income of a 5% sales increase, right? So we can do this very easy. For number two, I take my DOL, or my degree of operating leverage, and I multiply it by my percent change in sales, okay? So I'm gonna take my 4.8, and I'm going to multiply it by my 5%, I get 24%. Ooh. Bear with me here. There we go. No, you're not right. Four point out. Oh, that's a problem. Sorry. This should not be in percentage form, this, this cell. I'm just going to put it in number form. So I'm going to take 4.8 times 0.05 or 5%. That's the calculation. So 4.8 times Should be 24%. Why is this not working out for me in Excel? There we go. 24%. Must must have fat fingered a key there. That happens. So again, to figure out um, 
to figure out the what the degree of operating leverage is looking at the change in net operating income you just multiply the DOL times that percentage change that they give us now number three says they want us to prepare a new income statement okay we can do this very very easily right so we're gonna figure out what is our sales what's our variable cost what's our contribution margin fixed costs and um, what's the NOI well that's easy right we can figure this out very very easily right sales go up by five percent right so as of right now we know that our sales go up by five percent we know that our current sales are eighty thousand dollars right so if we take eighty thousand times 0 0.05 sorry 80,000 times 1.05 we get $84,000 in sales okay now we need to figure out what is our new variable expenses well the only thing that's changed is sales volume so our proportion of sales of variable costs and the CM ratio need to remain the same. Okay, these things have to remain the same because we didn't change any. Um, any of the ratios here so to speak or we didn't change any of the proportions of sales right so we need to figure out what are our new um, variable expenses going to be right so we know what our new sales are they're 84,000 we can figure out our variable costs very easy variable costs have to be 40 percent of sales so our variable costs are 33,600 we can do the same thing with the variable or with the contribution margin we know that for every dollar, 60% of that is contribution margin. Take our sales, multiply it by the contribution margin ratio. We get 50,400. Fixed expense did not change. They're 38,000. So the new net operating income is 12,400. Now, we want to figure out, does this change reflect what we're doing here well yeah it, it, it does right how, how can we tell well we know our original sales were ten thousand dollars right so our original NOI was ten thousand we know our new NOI is twelve thousand four hundred if we divide the um, the original net operating income, the old, by the new, or excuse me, I apologize. Okay, so we get $2,400. That's our change in NOI right so we want to figure out the change in NOI what's that percentage well we do the change by the old so I'm going to take my um, uh, the the difference the change in the net operating income divided by the original net operating income I get 24 percent so yes this holds true okay um, don't worry about exercise 10 I'll give you a pass on that one um, we won't test anything on multi product break-even points um, so we'll just let that one just kind of slip away so if you have any questions um, after you've done this please feel free to reach out to me I'd be happy to go over this with you again maybe use different examples maybe uh, explain it in a way that's a little um, 
you, you know, a little, a little better for you or, or, you know, a personal, personalized explanation, so to speak. Um, please do not be afraid to, or don't even hesitate to reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to help you. So if you have any questions, um, let me know. Uh, we're good to go this week. So we'll see you next week for um, our in-class session. Thanks and uh, have a great weekend.